Lesson 18, Advanced Parallel Circuits. We will be able to find the current and voltage drops in various parallel circuits. Let's go have a look at what we've done in the past. So far, we've been making our way through, firstly, a simple, uh, a pretty easy um, series circuit. This one was easy because both of these were the same, pardon me, both of these were the same, okay? Then we did a parallel, we did another series. This was a little bit harder because one was different from the other. Then we did an even harder one where we didn't even know one of the resistances, but it actually turned out that this was still pretty easy to do. We just did one of the series circuits where both of the resistors were the same, and we just started before we ran out of time to look at this circuit here, where the problem with this one is that both of the resistors are different. And we actually said, but because the current can choose, we figured out in the last dying seconds of the class that more current's gonna go through the top than the bottom. So let's now explore how to solve this circuit. This is the fifth circuit, so at least no, you can still think so. So we're gonna call this resistor at the top A, and this resistor at the bottom B. That's the first thing I would do when I would solve this kind of problem. The second thing I would do is that I would then, um, let's choose one of the three things. We can choose voltage, we can choose current, we can choose resistance. It doesn't actually matter which one we do, at the um, the start, um, it doesn't matter which one we do at the start, we're just going to work from there. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do uh, voltage, I think. So let's see if we can get that figured out. So the easiest one, believe it or not, is the voltage. If I wanted to know the voltage through A, that's actually pretty easy to work out. There's only one path for this volt, this current to go. If it, if it goes through that one path, then that means that it has to lose all of its voltage through the first resistor. That means that the voltage drop through that false first resistor is 10 volts. Just like in the other one, all I need to know is there's only one path that has to be 10 volts. The voltage dropped through B. Well, guess what? There's only one path. So therefore, it has to drop all of its electron voltage at that point. So VB is going to be 10 volts. The last one, the total voltage. Well, that's written on the battery. That's 10 volts. Voltage is the easy one for this example. Let's now look at current. Oh, let's maybe not. Oh, well, you know, we'll do resistance next. Resistance is pretty easy. Can someone tell me what is the resistance through A? Two. Two. Beautiful. Thank you. Resistance through A is two. What's the resistance through B? Three. Nice. Now, with the total resistance, I know that some of you guys have got the tip on your tongue five, but remember, this is a um, parallel circuit. We cannot just take that, we can't just take the number and write and add it together. Now, again, at this point, we could go, we, we could use the method that I taught you guys, which is one over two plus one over three, add them together, flip them over, yeah, that would work, and that would be a completely fine way to do this. But you know what? I, if I was solving this problem, would skip that, because I can't be bothered doing it. What I would do instead would be to do the current. The current, let's get all the, the values that we can see on the board. The current is, okay, we have no idea what the current is, but IA, IB, or even the total current. Huh. So where do we go from here? Where I would go is I would do this. I know the voltage 
through the I know the voltage to the top resistor. I know the resistance of the top resistor. So I can calculate the current of the top resistor. That's just going to be V equals IR. V divided by R equals I, which means that the voltage, which is 10 volts divided by the resistance, which is 2, equals 5 amps. So what does I stand for? Current. All right, thanks. It's five amps. That's what the current's going to be. Okay. Now, can I do the same thing with the second with the second resistor, VB? No. Yes. No. I vote no. All right. Are you sure? Because I reckon you can. Me too. Me too. It's a free. Ten doesn't go into free. Uh, three point three three three. Yes. Ten oh. doesn't go into three, but we can still go V divided by R. Ten divided by three is going to be three point three, and we're three. That's what exactly. We got, what we, so we can right. go into decimals. Yeah. Why not? Oh, I mean, damn. So that means. That means that the total current is, if I had five amps coming down from the top and 3.3 .3 coming up from the bottom, when they add together, what's the total current going to be? 8.333. 8.333, good. And this actually proves one of our points as well. We said at the start, there should be more current up than down. We've got five amps going up and we've only got 3.33 amps going down there is more current going up so that works that ticks this hypothesis so for the last bit here again i could go one over two plus one over like one on rt equals one over two plus one over three i could solve that or because i'm personally believe that i'm lazy i'm just going to do this v equals ir I'm going to go, well, R is going to be V divided by I. I know that the total voltage is actually, the total voltage is 10 volts. I now know that the total current is 8.33 amps. So that means 10 divided by 8.33 is going to give us 1.2. Ohms. And that now has all of the all of the voltage, currents, and everything pretty much worked out for this circuit. Um, the total voltage, yeah, and of course you could get that 1.2 by solving it using this equation down the bottom, but I usually don't do it because I'm lazy. You can still do it though if you want, but it's just gonna be this is gonna be. 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which is going to be um, 1 on RT equals 5 over 6. RT is going to be 6 over 5, which is 1.2. So that's how you do a slightly more complex circuit when you've got a, a current, when you've got different um, resistors at the top and the bottom. But again, we're using the same method that we used before. The only tricks again to remember, and I'm going to point this out, I pointed this out yesterday, I'm pointing it out again. You can't just add the resistors to get to RT for a series circuit, you just get for a parallel circuit. You just can't just add them. It's not as easy as that. But with a lot of, there are a lot of cheats. You can, for voltage, just go all the way down. And you can, for current, just, you know, you can, current does add together. So you can do it for current. We're going to power through to do the very last, I don't, uh, very last of our circuit. This is circuit six. This is the parallel one where we randomly throw a curveball. Let's explore this guy here. We're going to call this resistor A. We're going to call this resistor B. 
And we're going to start with, you can start wherever you want, but I'm going to start with voltage. Because voltage is the easiest. I know that the voltage through VA is going to be what? Who wants to tell me what the voltage through VA is going to be? Or who can tell me what the total voltage is? Hey. No. No, I, I, I. Well, what do you think is the total voltage? Start off with that. What's the total voltage? Total voltage is 10. No. Eight 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 eight. Eight, 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 eight. eight, 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 yeah. The total voltage is 8 volts. Now, there's nowhere else for the voltage to go, so it has to be 8 volts through A and 8 volts through B. Saying so you actually got it right, you just need to be a bit more confident. It's eight volts all the way across. That is pretty much exactly the same thing we did with the voltage in this one here. 10 volts, 10 volts, 10 volts, eight volts, eight volts, eight volts. Easy. Resistance is a bit more interesting this time. The resistance is for A, we know is what? What's the resistance to A? What is the resistance through A? Can someone tell me? Okay. Resistance through A is two. I think someone said two. I don't know if that was correct. Yeah, two. Two ohms and the resistance through B, we don't know. Just we're just gonna leave it blank. And we don't know the total resistance either. So we're just gonna leave that blank as well. We're gonna move on to current now current is a bit weird we don't know the current through a we don't know the current through b but this time we do know something we do know the current through the total what's the total current someone tell me what the total current is Ten. Thank you, just 10. 10 amps. The total current is 10 amps. Oi, stop barking. Sorry, ladies and gents. Um, I might have to do something with the dogs in a second. What I want you guys to do now, okay, so now looking at this, we can't figure out much with this circuit. What we can, because but what we can do is we could use these three things to work out, well, I want to do a different color. I don't want to do red, because I've already used red. We could use these three things to work out what the current is through A. Um, I've got to quickly let the dogs in. I want you guys to write down in chat what the current through A is. Work it out. Go. Yes, All right, who worked it out? Come on, let's have a look at chat. Who can tell me what the current is through the, fir through the first resistor? Can anyone tell me? Let's have a look. Four. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, uh, Jason. Nailed it. Um, so if I look at that, how does that work? How did he get four? Easily, Q and V, because I, uh, we want to know what I is. So V divided by R equals I. V in this case is 8 divided by 2, which is 4 amps. Now, there are a couple of places we could go with this problem now. Now that we know what that value is, uh, now that we know what that value is, we've got a couple of choices. We can either work out what um, this one here is. We could either work out what B is, or we could work out what, yeah, that's the next logical one to work out, because it's the only one that's got a gap here. How do we work out what 
B is? Well, here's the trick. We know that there are 10 amps here. Going into that 10 amps, we know we've got four amps down here. What is the amount of amps that must be coming up here to add to get to 10? What must that last value be? Someone in chat, let me know. Stop sending pictures to each other. Six. Thank you. Six is going to be the amount of current here. Six amps. So now we know, if we know this, the current is six amps, we know the voltage is eight volts, we can work out the resistance in this one in the middle. Uh, the resistance, V equals IR, the resistance is going to be V divided by I. We've got our eight volts. We've got our six amps. Eight divided by six is going to be 1.33. Uh, oops, ohms. And then to work out the total resistance, I'm just going to use these two here. I could have done this at the very, very start, but it doesn't matter. Resistance equals VI over um, VI over I, no, VT over IT, which is going to be 8 divided by 10, which is going to be 0 0.8. And that's it. That's how you would solve it. Um, I will point out that, yeah, this guy had, was a bit more challenging because, but again, we did the same thing. You look for one of these columns, which has got three unknowns or two unknowns, and just one missing. And then usually you can figure out what the last one is. Um, obviously these are simplified because we only ever use two resistors, but you could use do the same process for three resistors and four resistors, and it would be the same. We have three paths that the current could go down. We just have to sum all three together. It's the same sort of strategy. I like to show students this at the end of this sort of thing is that um, you can solve things that there are, do exist circuits that are mixed. We're not going to solve this, guys. So don't stress yourself. Don't have a heart attack. We don't usually solve problems that are like. Um, this. This is what we say for year 11 and 12. This is a mixture of both a series circuit and a parallel circuit. I can tell that it's a parallel circuit because the circuit is breaking into multiple parts, multiple branches. One branch goes up, one branch goes down. And I can also see that this is a, um, I can also see that this is a, um, sorry, a series circuit because in this part of the circuit, we have one bulb and then we have another bulb. So there's two bulbs in a row. And that means that this is going to become a little bit more challenging to work out. Believe it or not, you could still work this question out. Like even you guys at your limit, at your um, level that you're at now, you could still work out, well, this must drop 12 volts because, and this whole row must drop 12 volts. And then you could use that to figure out, well, that's going to be 6 amps because it's 12 volts, 6 amps. And you could be like, well, this is going to be the same. And you could figure out, you could actually work out this circuit on your own if you wanted to. My, normally what I would do is at the end of class, it would, there'd be one student, I'm not sure, I assume that student in this class is Jason, but maybe, it's Mar may, maybe it would be Marco, but usually, or maybe even uh, Min, but one student usually stays behind and says, so, how would you actually work this out? You could just work this out. You know, you just treat this as one big four ohm resistor. And then you just go through the rest of the, the, um, the things, work out the current, then you work out the voltage drop. But yeah, like it's not too difficult, but it is still, this is just that next step up. I'm not gonna go through that. So anyway, um, that's all the stuff that I wanted to show you guys. Um, that's all the stuff that I wanted to show you guys for the uh, lesson.